Hello everyone, this is Sister Roland, and all I need is a few minutes to continue our series, It's Time to Forgive God. And this is King David's story. So, this series takes us into 1 Chronicles 13 verses 9 through 14. We're not going to read it. We're just going to skim summarize exactly what happened. So, what happened was the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Lord, had been in Kirajit, I think it's called Kirajit Jerim. I'm sure I'm butchering it. It had been there for years because they had lost it because of Saul. You know, the different things that happened when Saul was reigning. So it was there with the Philistines for years. They had put it with Abinadab. Okay? So with Abinadab, Barak, um, the Abinadab household actually prospered because no matter where the Ark of the Covenant was, it brought, it brought prosperity. So David knew about this. This is why one of the reasons why, of course, he wanted it back because number one, it was for them in the first place. And he just wanted, he don't think the, um, the Ark of the Lord should be with the enemy. So, you know, they did what they had to do and so they could get the Ark back. So he did this grand thing grand procession it's because he wanted to you know he was so happy they were able to get the ark of the covenant after all those years because he was the only one you know who wanted to go get it back because nobody really cared after they lost it so he brought he brought out the best because you know whatever david does did stuff for god he he did his best he went all out and that's what he did with his procession so on the way of the procession while it was you know walking in the streets and doing different things it seemed as if some probably something happened in in the road and it seemed as if the ark was gonna fall so as a uh, uza whatever you may say you know went to go stop it from falling and then um the anger of the lord burned out against Uzzah and he died oh my goodness david was livid david number one he was livid he, he was afraid he was like what he's like i went I went and go this, this ark of the law was with the Philistines all these years and then now I come and get the ark of God now there's a somebody is gone it's like no man and he was like because he was he was actually gonna bring it you know where it's supposed to be but he's like I'm not gonna bring this thing look it seems to be cursed but no matter where the cup before prior no matter where the covenant was supposed to be, where it, no matter where the covenant was, it was always blessed. Can something really be blessed and cursed at the same time? No. Like I always say, a water faucet cannot give two waters at the same time. It's either clean water or dirty water. A person cannot do two, they cannot go in two paths. You either go to the right or to the left. You can't go to the right and the left at the same time. No. So how can you be blessed and then cursed at the same time? So what happened here? Because many people say, oh my goodness, he had good intentions. What happened to him? Oh, that's wrong and stuff like that. But we need to, oh, a lot of things in the Bible, we have to understand the context. There's different contexts. There's spiritual context. There's cultural context. There's social context in the Bible. You have to understand the context of what happened. Because even when I had read this very many years ago, when I didn't have what I have in a relationship with God where he could break down certain stuff, I was like, oh my goodness, God, you did that? That is so wrong. He was trying to help. You know why? What happened? But so, so that made David feel some type of way. Because it said, let's see what it says. It says in verse 11, and David became angry because the, of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. Therefore, that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. So verse 12, it says, David was afraid of God that day saying, how can I bring the ark of God to me? So not only he was angry and plus 
he was afraid. So he's angry with God because, of course, he did all of this, you know, put jeopardize, went and, and go fight and stuff like that. And then this is what happened. So what they opted to do, they placed the ark in Obed's Edom house. And boy, Obed Edom was getting blessed. What Obed Edom was getting blessed. He was getting blessed. I mean, and people saw it because obviously how his life was before. And how uh, it was not after getting the um, the ark, it was totally different. Uh, it was so different that it reached to David's ears. It reached to David's ears. So this man is getting blessed beyond measure. Because that's what always used to happen. Wherever the ark was, that person, wherever it was. It doesn't even matter. And it, no, no discrimination because when it went to Abinadab, Abinadab was a Philistine. So it was no discrimination. He was blessed too. He was blessed too. So this, what happened? What happened to Azza? So those stuff, we have to go way back before, you know. In Numbers 4.15, there were specific instructions given. And if not followed, the consequence would be death. There, you know, remember back in those days, there was no grace. You know, we... We um, benefit from grace because Jesus died on the cross for us. So when we do, when when we do commit certain sins, whether intentional or intent or unintentional, the grace of the grace, uh, um, the grace of the blood, you know, becomes the penalty, becomes the payment for that sin. Because sin, when there's sin, it requires death. Yes, even though we sin now, we might not get a physical death, but not all the time, but there's a spiritual death because that means there's a separation when you keep on sinning, you know, you become distant from God and that's like a spiritual death. So that's why every day you're supposed to thank God for Jesus because if it wasn't for Jesus. There's a lot of things. It, it, it was an, it would, would, a lot of people wouldn't be here anymore, but because of Jesus, we benefit from this grace. So. In numbers, there were specific is only certain people. This was law. This was law. It was only certain a certain group of people that was supposed to touch the covenant. It was only a certain group of people. So you would see that in numbers four fifteen. When you have a chance, you go look at that. You will also see that in numbers seven nine. The sons of Kohath carried the holy things on their shoulders. So. That the Ark of Covenant was only supposed to be carried by the sons of Kohath. That's number seven, nine. Only them. Nobody else. And then later on. And then later on in Deuteronomy 10, 8. Then the tribe of Levi took over. The tribe of Levi, you know, there were the priests and different things. So when the people sinned, they would go into the most holy of holy. And then they got to make sure they, they write or they wouldn't even come out. And only them had the authority to go into the most holy. Now, because of Jesus, we could enter, we could, uh, um, depending on your relationship, you know, how you seek God, you can, you can enter into the most holy of holies. Because there are people that have experienced that before. But it, of course, it requires a level of consecration, level of prayer, and a level of grace of God if he allows you to do it. Dependent. And then sometimes you may think, oh, you have to pray three, four, five days, but we don't know how you get to the most holies of holies. But of course, it is some type of seeking God that will get you to that place and of, that will get to that place if that's what you desire, you know, to do. So the tribe of Levi took over. So only the, it was a certain group of people that was supposed to handle, handle these things. So anybody else that tried to do these things, they would be eliminated. They would be eliminated. Some things right away. Some things it may not happen right away. Like, um, what is his name? The sons of Eli. With the sons of Eli. Remember they was, used to come in there. They used to eat the showbread. They was doing all kind of stuff. It didn't happen right away, but eventually they died because of what they were doing, because they had no authority to do it. And even if there was a king, his name was King Uzziah also. He went in, he did everything that God told him to do. He, 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 he was raised right in the eyes of, he did right in the sight of the Lord. But then he tried, he tried to become did his priestly, he tried to do a priest thing. And then he was, 
he he got leprosy so this is so back then the law it was law that only a certain group of people supposed to handle different things a certain hand was supposed to handle things in the house of God at the time and no one else and if you break that the penalty will it, it, it was death so that's what happened to Uzzah unfortunately yes he had good intentions but that was the law that was the law if the law was broken immediately there was um there was consequence this is why God was like if I, if this keeps on happening there's not going to be a, um, a lot of people in the human race that's why a lot back then people knew those stuff and then they wouldn't do that but I guess maybe they didn't teach them maybe that that is what and that's another thing that's why God told them to keep on teaching their children their children their children the laws because there was no grace that's why God tell them teach your children the law teach them when you walk in with them teach them the law you know teach them this different thing so each generation would know so maybe they didn't teach it to him maybe they didn't you know re, you know keep on pounding it in his head so he forgot and that's what happened so that is what happened it was the law that it, law was broken and then the penalty was um death so that is what happened so because of all and it was a lot of people that uh, um that broke the law and then that they were gone so when jesus came in this put a put it in in a, in a way like how it was happening so dramatically it put an end to these to this so David felt some type of way about God too because he was angry at God. But then when, I don't, I'm not sure if he went and probably do research, probably people, or even if he did address, I'm not sure he even addressed that he was uh, um, mad at God, why he was mad at God. But when he heard that how Obed-Edom was being blessed, he's like, hmm, maybe he thought to himself, I don't know, maybe God backed within, within himself and convinced himself, you know, God is not thing um something happened and then he eventually got um the ark of the covenant away from obed edom so even king david of israel you know king david king david loved the lord that's king david who stood i mean was willing to sacrifice his life he sacrificed his life to go fight against this big old giant i mean he was used to fight lions and tigers and bears oh my i mean seriously david did not play david he loved the lord he did he would give his last for god he, though he may have it had he had issues but he loved god and then even him he found himself angry at god because of something that happened he may not he he didn't un fully understand why it happened and then this is how we too there's things that you know happen or things we've heard and then we don't fully understand and we become mad at god but the one who's going to make you understand it you mad at him how you ever gonna you're never gonna understand it you're never gonna understand what happened because you mad at the person that can break it down for you so that was king david's story so king david was able can't say 100 percent. he he was able let's say yes uh uh, uh he because he continued well definitely kind of really say 100 percent if he did or did not he may or he may have not but we know now we understand now why that happened to Azza. maybe later on down the line he too became to understand what happened to Azza. but now we know maybe this story you had heard this story and it bothered you you didn't understand why but that is why because laws were written and if they were broken immediate death but because of Jesus Christ that died on the cross for us. Thank thank you, God, for Jesus. We don't have to go through that anymore. It's not in that level. It's not on that level anymore. There is a death, but not death, physical death like, like that. Especially if something that you didn't you would you had a good will, you have good intentions, and then that ended up happening. Back then, the law didn't the law didn't care about good intentions. It didn't it that it didn't care because it wasn't even human. It was they had no feelings it had nothing so you broke it you gone so that's all i had to say for this series that was king david's story on his being mad at god and he had to forgive god eventually he had to forgive god he's like 
Um, I need God. Eventually, he had to forget. But I don't know exactly when it happened. But I'm sure he he would do. He probably did research. Probably somebody came and reiterated the law to him. And then when he heard of what it was happened, because he let me tell you, he had to forgive God. Let me he had to forgive God because uh, even though you heard, yeah, this was getting blessed with Obed Edom. If you didn't want to mess with God no more, you would say, oh, I don't care. If it's blessing Obed Edom, I ain't messing with that thing no more. It's not coming to my house. But he's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, Obed Edom, you ain't gonna take all the blessings. So he went and go get the ark of the Lord like it was supposed to do. So that's all I had to say on this subject and this series, this part. I think I have another story. Um, it's going to be about Job. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.